Hi guys, it's Debbie and it is that time of the year in which we count down just how many hours I spent on Netflix slash Prime Video slash basically any streaming platform you could think of. I must say these were hours well spent as I don't feel like last year I watched that many series I actually enjoyed. I think the only one I really really appreciated was Maniac with uh, Jonah Hill and Emma Stone. That was amazing. There was the second season of Westworld but that's set aside in 2018 I didn't really get round to watching anything I found uh, particularly impressive. I don't even think I made my end of year video in which I talk about my favorite Favorite series. But this year was pretty positive. I actually had to sit down and pick what to include on today's list. And I even started following some older series I had been planning on watching for a while. I started Peaky Blinders, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Sinner, Broadchurch. Let's get into what was released in 2019 and what I enjoyed the most. Just another quick announcement before getting right into the video. I haven't watched The Mandalorian. Unfortunately, I haven't seen it yet, although I can't wait to watch it, and that could have a lot to do with Baby Yoda. But speaking of today's list, the first series I'd like to cover is actually one that didn't receive that much coverage. It was pretty low key, although I found it incredibly engaging. That series is Unbelievable. Unbelievable is a crime series covering the real story of a team of detectives examining a string of terrible sexual assaults, which turn out really hard to inspect for our detectives. The evidence and trails are very hard to put together. While three or four states away from the center of the investigation, uh, months if not years earlier, another girl claimed to have been a sorted, but nothing in her story seemed to add up to the point that it looks like she might have made everything up. So on the one hand you have the main part of this crime story, this story of an investigation, it is very dark, very gripping, it goes into all the details and interrogations, the desperate search for the culprit. On the other hand you have the extreme difficulty of covering these cases, of investigating them, um, even because of everything that entails even on a social level. So I loved how the series drags you down this dark rabbit hole of investigations while one of the main leads could possibly not even be true. And it's based on a real life story. This series features a lot of pretty well-known faces. For example, there's Caitlin Dever from films like Booksmart, but the best role in my opinion was Toni Collette's. She was the tough, no-nonsense detective. If you like dark, gripping investigations, this is for you. On a very generous spectrum, I would place it somewhere between criminal minds and Broadchurch. The next series I'm about to speak about is probably one you expected to pop up at some point throughout this video because it has been plastered all over every article or video that covers the best series of 2019 and that is Euphoria. Now I read somewhere a while back that Euphoria is just sex and drugs covered in a lot of glitter. And it kind of is, but not in such a simple way. Euphoria is a story of a teenager who is heavily, heavily struggling with drug addiction. She is wonderfully portrayed by a very touching Zendaya. She lives in a small town in which everybody knows everybody, where everybody judges everybody, and in which she only finds a ray of joy in meeting Jules, uh, the newcomer to the town and possibly the most over-the-top, colourful, fun, different person she would have ever expected to meet. The two soon bond and the series covers all the issues both of the girls are going through. And to include all the other characters in this story, each episode opens by focusing on one of their lives. So, uh, so covering also what they're going through, what they might be struggling with. So in addition to making us feel very strong emotions towards these characters, are very different emotions, it's not always proud appreciation. The series covers all a series of taboo topics. So you've got substance abuse, you've got problems in the family, sex and how sometimes it is just sex and how sometimes it's definitely not just sex. It covers the complications of love in a very mature approach. You have the problem of drug addiction and how it completely tears families and relationships apart, how hard it is to overcome an addiction, and all of this is with an absolutely amazing cinematography. So yes, it is sex and drugs and a lot of glitter, but not in the way you'd expect it. This is very hard to explain without watching the series. I would highly recommend watching it. Let's just say the creators brought your regular, uh, average high school story to a whole new level. There's actually another teen series, I feel so ancient saying this, I would like to quickly quote, um, and it is Chambers. This is not on today's list because it's one of the best series of the year. It's not one of the best series of any year. But I watched it a around the same time of Euphoria and I needed to know 
whether anybody else has seen this because I just never hear anybody speaking about it. Chambers is this weird but somehow absorbing story, I, I was dragged into it, but the story of a teenager who has a heart transplant and then starts to go through all weird experiences and it's set in a small town on the outskirts of a desert. It has nothing to do with euphoria but I, I thought it was my only chance to see if anybody out there had seen this. But back to our list. The next series uh, on this list is something completely different uh, from any other project um, I'll speak about today for a series of reasons, and that is Chernobyl. I'm going to be totally blunt with you. Chernobyl is one of the most anxiety-inducing, well-explained and sadly captivating series I've seen in a long time. The series covers the Chernobyl disaster, a huge explosion that occurred at a nuclear power plant in Ukraine back in 1986. For those who didn't live the event back at the time, either because they were too young to comprehend any of it, or because they were simply weren't even born yet, like myself, every piece of information um, um, comes from relatives, friends, people we know who lived it back at the time. So the idea that we have about that event is always something very distant from us, something scary but also abstract. It's a little how children now feel when we tell them about 9-11. For example, I knew I understood how big the impact of that event was in the Soviet Union, but I had never really grasped how big the event was in general, how big it was on a global scale, how, how, how dangerous it was. I remember when I was a child, my my parents, uh, we live in Italy, telling me how uh, they couldn't eat mushrooms, lettuce, tomatoes, and that's how lightly my mind had processed all of this. It wasn't a huge catastrophic event, it was something far away that could have brought radiation over where we were, but it's something in the past. But the Chernobyl series covers everything. It explains everything from the action night of the explosion to many years later and it covers in very scientific but simple words every single event that happened and the devastating impact on the surrounding area and the threat of how the situation was quickly degenerating into something completely destructive for half of the world. Many scenes were actually recreated based on footage from the 80s and throughout the whole series whenever we get close to radiations we hear the crackling sound of the equipment used to measure that radiation just going up and up as if we are there with the characters. And if that wasn't anxiety inducing enough, if that didn't make us feel a fraction of how the people back at the time were feeling, uh, there is this gut-wrenching music in the background, uh, which for reference was made by the same composer of uh, the new Joker film music. Now moving on to more pop culture, again I'm so ancient, related topics, the next series on this list is one I might have enjoyed mostly because of personal taste. That's why I would love to hear your opinion on this series. I want to know whether I just watched it as blindly as a fan or whether there's actually some sense into what I'm saying. Let's take a step back. I am a huge fan of My Chemical Romance, but one of the members of the band, Jared Way, created a comic book called Umbrella Academy, and this year that book became a series. So I, as an old fan, obviously immediately jumped to that series like any fan would have. Uh, that's why I'm saying I don't know whether my opinion on this series is totally unbiased or whether I'm, you know, just a fan. The series itself actually doesn't have literally anything to do with My Chemical Romance, but you can really feel the influence of themes such as vague edginess, angst, misunderstanding on behalf of society, social isolation, rebellion. As a matter of fact, The Umbrella Academy is a series I would have loved to watch when I was 15 or 16, but which I also adored in 2019. The plot follows a dysfunctional family of superheroes with powers that range from super strength to mind control, time travel. They have been split up for years, each with their own story, until they are reunited because of an imminent threat of the world about to end. And of course they have to stop that from happening. That background story is actually not that spectacular, it's not that new, because the best feature of this series is actually a set of characters who were also peculiar and fun to get to know. One of my favourite characters is Klaus. Um, he has the power of uh, seeing the dead, of communicating with the dead, but he lives this power more as a curse, so he relies on taking in drugs, although this situation creates uh, a very meaningful storyline, but it is punctuated with hilarious moments, many of which are with another character who is number five. Now number five looks like your regular kid, but he is actually a full-grown adult man stuck in the body 
of a teenager. So understandably, he had the best lines. He was uh, the most sarcastic out of all the characters. I don't want to say too much to not spoil the plot, but it is a great series, in my opinion. I want to hear your opinion uh, with the ups and downs of the story. The next series I would like to speak about is the one that generated the most polarized reactions as some loved it, some hated it, and that is the third season of Stranger Things. So back in 2017, I loved all but one section of the second season of Stranger Things, as I think most of us did. Um, the plot, which usually followed Eleven, this mysterious teenage girl with psychic powers and her group of friends on a mission to stop the world from being taken over by the Upside Down, suddenly dropped everything and dedicated an episode or two on a totally unrelated chapter, on totally unrelated characters, a boring and useless, useless segment that had no relation to the rest of the story. So understandably, many viewers were put off and wary of the idea of future developments. If I have to be totally honest, I wasn't expecting that much from this third season, but I was positively surprised. The mood was very similar to the one of the first first episodes, but knowing all the settings and the characters, we get to go deeper into the story, into the personalities. For example, Eleven starts to open up, they are totally new characters such as Robin, whose friendship with Steve was pure gold, old roles such as Billy and Hopper and Dustin get huge screen time. So if you were disillusioned after season two, don't worry. Um, it gets better from there. And if you haven't seen Stranger Things at all, that is why I tried to stay rather vague in, in the description I gave about the, this third season, I would recommend watching it. It will bring you back to your childhood. It will make you want to call your friends on the landline, not on your phone. Go out on your bikes, go in the basement, take out a board game. And in addition to the fact that it has a really fun, really engaging supernatural storyline, there are some characters you will fall in love with. And with that, we reach the end of today's list. There are some other notable mentions, such as uh, Love Death Robots, an anthology series, made up of short stories presented through different genres of animation and which mostly speak about love, death and robots. I then watched the third season of Atypical, but the series I would recommend the most are the ones I mentioned earlier. And now I'd love to hear what your thoughts on all these topics are. I'd love to know what you've been watching, what you're looking forward to watch next, so make sure to leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the new one. Bye!